a few weeks ago, I introduced uh, the idea, some ideas from a book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. And we talked about conflict and how conflict works and that actually peace might be the presence of conflict. And that idea resonated with you. So let's go into a little bit more about that. Conflict or the presence of conflict in my mind is one of the leading indicators of a healthy team. Now, why is that? But first, let me clear something up. When I say conflict, a lot of people think I mean healthy conflict, and I don't. I actually just mean conflict. The health, or lack of it, comes in how it's resolved. So there's the entering of conflict, which can be scary and difficult. It's the resolution of it that is where we find the health. And the presence of that kind of conflict is built on something. There's something under it. And the reason that it is the leading indicator of a healthy team, including a marriage, a family, a business, a nonprofit organization, the reason it's there, the reason that's important is because conflict is built on trust. When you experience the presence of conflict and its healthy resolution, you can actually see trust at work. And trust, I think, is the fabric of everything. I think it's the only currency worth collecting. I think building trust, fostering trust, is incredibly important in building high quality teams and families and organizations. And it's incredibly important in the delivery of value for the benefit of others, what we often call a business. So how do we build trust? How do we do that? Well, it's incredibly vulnerable. We'll just make that statement. And the lack of trust or the fear of trust increases the invulnerability in an organization. But how do we build it? That's what's interesting today and what I want to talk about. In his book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by um, Yuval Noah Harari. Fabulous, interesting book. Um, once again, I'm about a third of the way through it. <laughs> but I've, I've heard him talk. I've seen some video work he's done. Uh, brilliant thinker. In this book, he's playing with the idea of, of where, did the, where did we come from? Why, why are we as this homo sapien, this group of humankind, um, so really quite dominant in the world? And he, he kind of asks the question, why did we, who at one point in history were really kind of mid-tier in the food chain? I mean, it's not like we're the strongest, fastest, most capable physical beings. There's, there's predators who are way, way more powerful than us. But why did we leap in a, from a biological or, or evolutionary perspective? We leapt in a very short amount of time from the middle of the food chain to the top, to an alpha predator. How did that happen? And he plays with a few theories, a lot of which organize around what he calls the cognitive, sorry, the cognitive revolution, which took place around 10,000 years ago according to his research and, and people who do this kind of work. So around 10,000 years ago, something happened that had to do with cognition, our ability to think, and that turned into an increased capacity to communicate. And there's multiple theories about how communication actually helped us leap, make this leap. But one of them is, well, there's actually three that he breaks down in here. Number one, our ability to talk about the world the natural order and load those communication systems with much more information. That's number one. Um, he also describes, and he actually puts a lot of weight on, and I think he's probably right, our ability to talk about things that don't actually exist in the world, the way in, in terms of the material world, our ability to form myths and stories, our ability to create tribal connection and belonging and, and systems that order ourselves into large communities. That was super important. But he plays with another idea. He says, our language, it appears, was actually not just formed. We didn't just learn how to talk about the material world and the non-material world. Yes, we did that. But we learned how to talk about each other. And in doing so, we introduced gossip. Now, gossip's an interesting thing. The ability to talk about each other behind each other's backs. And in today's world, this is a much maligned activity. It's, it's bad, it's, all, it's wrong, it's sinful to gossip about each other. But I want to tell you that gossip, the ability to talk about each other behind each other's back, is 
foundational to the building of trust. You see, I, my business is built on relationships and, and referrals. People who have experienced my work refer their friends, their colleagues to me. So it's incredibly important to me that people talk about me behind my back. That's gossip. But I want them to do it in a way that fosters trust, not fractures trust. In fact, I want to be the kind of person where people are eager to talk about me behind my back in a way that fosters trust instead of fractures trust. We call it reputation. We, we all should want this. This is how we build trust amongst each other. Trust is a, is a fabric that strings across the community, and we're all talking about each other behind each other's back. He, he says in the book that, that do, do, he asked the question, do you think physicists sit down and talk about the cosmic order when they get together for lunch? Or, or do you think that history professors talk about the origins of World War II when they're in the, in the break room on a university campus? If they have those, I don't know. He asked this question and he goes, well, sometimes, but no. They're actually talking about the conflict between one of the professors and the dean. They're talking about somebody who, uh, who is in trouble with their wife. They're talking about people who are, who are, they're talking about each other. They're gossiping. He says it appears as though, or, or this theory suggests, that our language formed around gossip. And in doing that, we were able to understand and build fabrics and networks of trust that build social belonging. You needed to know who was evil. You needed to know who was dangerous. We, as a community, need to know that kind of stuff. So we talk about each other behind each other's back. If you ever say to somebody, hey, can you keep a secret? I want you to know that that secret is kept plus one. Everybody has a plus one. The person that they're intimate with, that they share their deepest thoughts, thoughts with, that's gossip. This is how the, the, the game of telephone, how, how information spreads across a community really, really fast. But we want to be people. We want to be a community. You want to participate in community. Where that process builds trust instead of fractures trust. You can break a community apart by starting to share rumors into that gossip cycle, into that communication cycle, and start to undermine the very fabric that you're, that you're living in. Or you can be a person who builds trust. So it's interesting. He actually talks about, we need to be people who learn how to effectively gossip. Now we have different names for it today. We don't call it that, but it truly is talking about each other behind each other's back. We call it networking. We call it referrals. We call it, um, we follow up on people. I had somebody come to my office yesterday who I've never worked with. And we started to dialogue and talk about the possibility of working together. And she had already talked. She told me she's talked to two people, told me who they were about me. And apparently they said good enough things for her to come in and meet me in person. They gossiped in a way that built trust. And I want to remind you that trust is the fabric of everything is the only currency worth having. I would rather have trust than cash because cash that is collected and in the process violates trust is unsustainable. But cash is a measure of value creation that's built on trust has a tendency to sustain itself. Trust is necessary for people to engage in conflict and resolve it in healthy ways. So if you're in a relationship and you're lacking conflict, you have an artificial harmony, there are things we don't talk about that need to be talked about. You have a trust problem. If you're in an organization where people are siloed off and sitting in, in, in their little fiefdoms in their, and they have their agendas, and, and, but when they get to the boardroom or the conference room or the staff meeting, everything is calm or, or well, you have a trust problem. You're not gossiping about each other in a way that is building trust. You're probably gossiping about each other in a way that is fracturing it. So 
in the process of going through this, this thing we call life and building communities where people can belong, gossip. We've been doing it for 10,000 years, according to Yuval Noah Harari. And it's allowed us to accomplish incredible things. And from time to time, we tear it all down. So build, build trust, build community, foster trust, and you'll be able to do conflict. Thanks.